Coming behind you. But Excuse me, Michelle. We've got a special video for you. So we'll watch the live glass going for a second, and then we've got a treat. Folks, what's happening? We're here. The show is happening. We're going to give you an intro in a second, but now we've got about a 20 minute, 15 minute piece to make. So, everyone who's brand new to the show will just have to wait a second, and then we'll give you an intro into the show in a minute. But uh, here you got Oliver getting some color ready. Here comes Chris. Prepping a blue trail. A blue trail. Chris has got a pipe with some glass on it. It's a really deep ruby. Put my mic on. Ugh. It is. It's a deep nice. ruby red. And I'm making something that we made during the big show. When we did the big giant glory hole. But I'm making a little bit of smaller, another garden gazing ball for my warmer upper. Let's do this trail, baby. Yeah, beautiful. What's up? We're back and I've been here standing in front of the glory hole for 35 seconds heating up the piece that I'm making for the warmer upper. I got a beautiful uh, cobalt blue trail on there that I'm going to go into the mold and bust that trail up with the optics so that when we do blow this uh, amazing garden orb Whoa. out, it's gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna put some dichro on it too. The sparkle and bling bling. A garden so, orb. Yep. So Ladies this one's going in. All right, you guys. I want to hear what everyone thought of that intro. I thought it was pretty cool. I think Heather did an amazing job creating it. It's a little bit of all of us. We're gonna adapt it a little bit. What would you think? Did it work? Did you like it? Yeah. Let us know what you guys think of the intro. Oh, Joey says that intro was A number one. What? <laughs> Had all the players on there looking good. <laughs> Made us all laugh. It was a cool intro. We're going to add a few things to it, but for the new people who have never been to the show, uh, we are a family business, educational videos about glass blowing every week, every Tuesday, and you can be part of the action. We're going to tell you how as the night rolls out. All right, you want to bring that... Uh, Diaper over, you can flash it in there and bring All it right, right over. We'll set it there and I'll pick it up. Wendy, the first timer, love the video. All right, so Oliver is bringing over the micro right now, right out of the garage. He's going to give it a flash in the furnace right over me because I'm going to stay nice and hot. Go ahead and don't be dropping them all over the floor, whatever you do. I'll grab that one on the end when you come out first. All right. Go to the bent. Go to the marble. A lot of action here. Oh, oh. Take another quick heat on this. Yep, right underneath me. So they're preheating these dichroic right sparkle glass pieces. And they got to be hot enough that they'll stick to the glass. So if you... Uh, Try and stick cold room temperature glass to a molten piece. Don't Usually just cracks the glass apart and it falls onto the floor. Oh. 
and treachery, just like that. Ooh. Well. So that was like a half, that was a little quarter piece that hit the flow. No biggie. But he's got like three or four really nice pieces of that sparkle glass on there. And he's gonna be shaping it up to expand it out into a gazing ball. And uh, what you all do with your gazing balls is yeah. <laughs> totally up to you. <laughs> we just make them, folks. <laughs> You're gonna see the process right here, right now. <laughs> uh, but he's melting it in really good. He's got the, uh, he, he was very aware of which direction. There's only one side of that sparkle glass that actually sparkles. The other side is either just clear glass or a black background so that it expands really, uh, or it uh, really has a nice backdrop for the colors to pop. So when you're thinking about the way this ball is gonna blow out and the way you're gonna use it in whatever way you use it, you gotta be aware of which side you're picking things up on. So they had them laid down, face down on the, the preheating paddle, picked them up and they're on the outside blinging on the outside of this sphere. The it's ones with the- sweet. The ones with the black cool background. Color on it. Oh, wait. Are I'm super gonna show tight. it real close to the camera in one minute, guys, but I wanna, while I got it hot, I wanted to make sure that I got a good marvering on it. So I got a, a, the proper shape for another gather. A marvering. That's right, check it out. And we do need to remember cameras get hot. Remember this. Because it's summertime. <laughs> Lots of love to Heather jacks. for putting together a sweet intro. Everyone was loving it, Heather. Super cool. Lots of love for my world. comments. Yeah, so I'm letting it cool off so I can go in and gather the other gather of clear crystal over it and actually encase the the color that I did, especially the red. The, the core of this is red. And red will burn out real easily if you don't encase it in between two layers of crystal. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. That's a pretty sweet looking color pattern. Really nice. So he's gonna go for, this is the warmer upper and this is, uh, you want to do the table? Why he's? Uh, he's just going for a gather. We're going to see a pretty big, crazy gather here. Uh, we're going to finish this sphere up fairly quick. We'll go over the table. We got some really nice pieces lined up. Uh, we got a nice uh, VIP video that's going to be going live tomorrow. A little intro on one of our products. If you guys are a VIP subscriber to the show. Get a little insider info, and we're trying to do those more often here. But well, Chris is cooling down the pipe on his own over there. He's got the, uh, it's just water. A really cool custom metal pipe cooling situation. And he cooled it down for a larger piece. You really want to be able to grab up near the front of the pipe for leverage's sake. So I'm letting the heat uh, sink into that core gather that I let get so cold before I uh, get it. Go ahead and give me a light puff, Oliver. Mm -hmm. That's good. So I want to make sure, for sure, that I've got this chilled all in the right areas so it sure, blows out nice sure. and round. Welcome back, everyone. A lot of familiar names out there watching the show. Sharon, Robin's on. Bill's watching. Rachel, Alexandra's calling me out for my socks and stocks. I don't know what to say about that, though. You got, you got no argument? No, I don't have an argument. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is right at the exact moment that Chris is about to spherize the glass. He's cutting in the neckline. That's where the ball is going to break off of the pipe. And Oliver will be presenting the liquid. I mean, uh, well, lightly. Not liquid. The air. <laughs> Good. All right, I'm gonna get one more heat on it, and I'm gonna have you uh, shield neck it, Jake, while I'm turning it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And Oliver, I'll have you blowing it. Okay. You got it. Well, for the you may have to. Here. If I need to go up and down, you're gonna have to stand on. I mean, stand up and down. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Hello? All right, some people missed the intro, so what I'm thinking is Hello, we run the intro at the end Hello, of the Arbor. night. Slowly though, slowly. So if anyone comes to the show, we'll think it's another intro. Slowly. Tender. Keep going. Keep blowing. This is where Oliver starts to get faint. Back. Deep breath. Blow. Sometimes people ask if you ever knock your teeth. It's getting hot. Good. The only time you knock your boy, teeth is when something gets crazy. We like keeping these gazing balls in the garden nice and uh, thick, you guys. We don't want a paper thin. We don't want a, a bird flying by with a hard cherry pick and, you know, doing his business from 20, 30 feet up and boom! It'd be horrible. The cherry pick <laughs> takes out your gazing ball. You can't have that. All right. Now remember, this are kind of brown right now, but this is actually going to be really, really beautiful red. Red with some cobalt blue. Saw some gorgeous looking dichro on there. Looks nice. Oliver's gonna glove up. Yeah. I knew what was coming. Pretty cool pattern. I'm gonna take a flash shake. You wanna hit the door for me real quick? Maybe grab the other one. Oh, I got it. This is perfect. All right. Did you put that? Uh the stuff in the box? I did on the bottom. You're going to put it right on top of the, the, the frack sits in there, Oliver. So I'm going to cool this off. What'd you say, Shell? You'll get the door, Jake? Take it. Perfect. Got it right on that frax. Ready to get in there. We're nice, good. Oliver. All right. Well, nice. that's going to be hot. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. That turned out sweet. Nice warmer upper. Yeah. Run. Super zoom, right? Because we're on a stationary camera. Uh, looks like, folks, we got a mushroom situation out here with real live mulch. And we've got some one of a kinders. They're all one and done here. And when they're done and they're in someone's home, they're done. So we're not going to be able to highlight them all on the show. We got beautiful pictures of them on the website. But we do have a couple that are matched up with a matching set. This one's got a snail that goes with them. And this guy's got a couple slugs over here, 10 and 12. Number five's got a slug with it, perfectly matching red and white special. But these guys are just looking incredible. And we got a few different styles too, the standalone basers with the uh, color on the stem. Bright yellowish orange, pink, and the classic red and white top, that's number six. You got the kind that sit on a chopstick in your plant or in your garden, or wherever it may be. I love how the red cap on that one fades into the stem a little bit. Totally. Mm -hmm. The growth of the shroom. Mm -hmm. All of the slugs and the snails have names on the website. And the slugs and the snails have names, per Bess's comment. Uh, I think she uh, was the one that set this table up and probably named all those little fellas, too. Yeah, for any of you guys out there who are thinking about buying something, if you don't know what one and done means, one and done <laughs> means that these are one of a kind. There isn't another one like it, and we're not putting them into produ production, which means, oh my gosh, we love this design, and we're going to make 42 of these and sell them in the gallery. They're one and done, one of a kind, nothing else like 
like it out there, especially the ones with the matching slugs uh, and snail. They're super, super sweet, super cool. And they're a special price, Michelle mentioned, for the show for you guys. And we just can't physically make all of these and put them all on the website like Chris was talking about. So that's the beauty of these shows. And the reason we do this is to give you guys an opportunity to purchase something crazy and support Dearborn business. Oh, these are a little here. different style. These are some of our favorites over here. Five of our favorites that we picked out that we will recreate if we sell multiples of them. And the way we normally do that is if you're the first one to purchase, say it's number three here, and you went for this purple and gold Van Gogh capped transparent beauty, the first person to hit the purchase button at 6.30 will get that one. And then if there's multiples after that, we'll make them to order in the same colors, same style, handmade. They'll be a little bit different. And that's the beauty of it. Number two is insane. Look at that. Look oh, at that's that stem. beautiful uh, Sierra tobacco action. Yeah, with bar color gold. It's a beauty. Show off that number five, Jake. Number five is a little cutie too over here. Look at this little fella. I like him. I like that one because you can put it in your plants, little chopstick in it, and yeah. rotate it for your plants as well. You know, when you got those starter plants and they just don't grow. Super cute. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, Sweet, that's, so that. that's the table. That actually goes live at 6.30, right? So in about uh, 11 or 12 minutes. Exactly. We got a dichro one, number I, one. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. That is that same sparkle Spark glass that we just used on that gazing sphere which will be live here tonight on the show, and we'll keep you updated when that happens. But that's number one over here. These are all one and dones, and these were all pulled from the back room of our back stock of mushroom collection for our spring show. So fresh eyes on those pieces right there. And before we get started into the custom order scenario, we do have a custom order here tonight. We probably are gonna need to spin the wheel of doom here at the Glass Academy. The Wheel of Doom. Well, it's because everyone's going to lose when I win this challenge. Oh, I don't know about that, man. So a lot of these, I feel like I got in the bag. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I feel very confident. We did a little something, and Oliver is pretty confident with the longest raindrop at this point. Wait, where is it? We got rid of it, folks. Just for this week, there is no longest raindrop because somehow this thing was weighted to always land on the longest raindrop. So we nixed it. Maybe a little less confident on my end now. <laughs> we got some fresh ones. We got some really cool. These are the challenges we do every show between the glass blowers. And we're going to see what happens right here tonight on the show. There's a couple new ones in there, too. Something crazy. We got partners basketball. Oh. I did put a regular basketball on there, which is where we make a ring. You have a, a, a little tin, and we got to shoot cuts of glass into the tin and get as many as you can get. Molten free throws? Exactly. Or free throws. Free throws. That's a tongue twister. It's not free throws unless you do free only throws. get three of them. No, you get two. Oh. But this is partners, and we've done this one time where you decide we're gonna spin the mold for who's playing with Lou, Mom, and your partner, one person's cutting, the other person's using a paddle to redirect the cuts and bank them into the basketball area. <laughs> I'll get the basket. You get the basket <laughs> situated, we'll start spinning the mold and we'll put a dummy in your place. Shall we, Oliver? All right, let's get after it. Have you played basketball yet? I have not. I played a lot of basketball growing up. I've never played basketball. It's He's got the idea. It's almost exactly the same. Don't yeah. you worry. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, would you like to join us here? <laughs> Don't know why. I kind of expected a little Hold bit on, of a bigger tin. Yeah, because I'm going to be making the court. Let me just write my spot down. That's Chris's spot. This is for the first two people to get picked are on a team together. This is partners basketball. Remember when we had? That's Chris that? over there. Yeah, number one. <laughs> He's excited. <laughs> is this like schoolyard pick? Who's on his team? Find it out right now. Oh. Okay. So we got winners over here. <laughs> 
Oliver and Chris versus Jake and Michelle. There is one signature on the GA Cup that was the last partner's uh, challenge. It's the only partner's challenge we have and the only signature with two names on it. So we're going to have to add ourselves to that list one more time. Do you know if you come visit, we can hold up the cup and you can get your picture taken with the cup. It's like, true. I mean, it's not like the Stanley Cup where it's behind glass. No, 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 no. Our cup is like so do we want to decide? We need to decide who's shooting and who's redirecting. I think let them, oh, let them go first. They're so going first. Okay. Sure. Sure. I, check it out. I hope nobody's listening to our secret conversation. No, I, I, I see their mouth. <laughs> but since you've never shot before, I'll shoot. You deflect with double paddle action, oh, and then okay. you'll know for One next time that you can shoot. One what? paddle. One. You can't. You can't hold five paddles like this. Do you see how the rules come out after we start strategizing? Yeah. That's always been the rule. Yeah, thanks, Bess. I don't know. It's my first time playing. <laughs> All right. So Oliver will be, this is the deflection zone. Here's and of course, this is the perfect day to Got be wearing it. Birkenstocks when we're sending over little molten nuggets of glass. Who's deflecting on your team? We haven't figured it out yet. Well, just so you know, this is our paddle. What? And this is your deflection paddle. <laughs> what? That's right. So if it happens to go through the hole and doesn't work, oh well. There you go. That's the rule? Yeah. That's right. Stay folks. That's how it works around here. All right. Well, there you go, Oh, Thank you very much. One gather, no reheats, as many cuts as you can get. Let's see what you got, Oliver. Now, is it better to stand to the side, or should I, I stand right behind? And I'm like, behind it, because they're all going to be just kind of like this. And proper etiquette is you got to have your legs like this. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect form, Oliver. <laughs> perfect form. There's your form. shooting line, Chris. Now, we need the audience, we need the peanut gallery to really do a good job of checking on his toe. Because if his toe crosses that line, disqualification. How, how is it? How many shots we get out of a single gather? Is this with no reheats? That's with, right. With no reheats. Okay. Precisely. This is going to be go. like have a rapid fire. I can't. You got this extended pretty far, Jake. Yeah, it's because it's partners. Ooh. Come on, work it out, team. Play the bank. These guys are bombing. Molten glass. See off. if you can catch it on there. Oh, oh off the rim. rim! Have you guys got one yet? There's oh, one. Oh. <laughs> Two. Two. Nice work, nice work, team. Mom, I think we got a good chance here. Chris can't even get it to the bucket. Ooh. Oh my God! Oh, it was over the line. Oh, Julie. Got one toe. Julie. Joey, look at the mark. Oh, oh. hold on, it's getting cold. Disqualification. That's horrible. You lose one out of the bucket. Oh my goodness. Hey, more than one person noticed. Are you the deflector, Mom? Or who's that? Who's shooting a? Yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah, I'll just like. You deflect? Oh, let right. oh, me set, I mean set it right on there. Wait, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's just stay nice. there. Oh! oh. <laughs> it ain't easy. So they got zero as no the deflectors. No way. We got three in the bucket. That's 30. Then we got four in the bucket. 40. And we got 46, 49, 50 points. You were disqualified. There's there's 50 qualified oh, points that. on this board. Can I get that? I'm gonna stand real far back. Here we go, Mom. I'm not right. disqualified. Wait, wait. 50 points. Oh. I gotta get it deeper, I'm trying. Yeah! yeah! Oh! She's got the technique. Yes! Oh my god. Okay. Oh, oh is that no Now good? that I see no what's good. going on. Oh, bad shot. Oh, what do we need? One more to win? We already won anyway. We are. Yeah! <laughs> A little more for good measure. You haven't won yet. What? 
What do you mean? There's three. I add them up. We have 50. You got disqualified. Yeah, this is 10 points. Look, at, here's yeah, our 30. Here's our yeah, final you one. You did get disqualified. What? Now you're just saying I'm disqualified? Absolutely. You stepped over the line. We all saw. saw. Everyone <laughs> saw it. Right there. I don't think that's true, but whatever. Oliver. This sounds like Chris and Oliver erasure. This sounds like. <laughs> Well, that was really fun, everyone. <laughs> Love to take the W like that. I think it's a crock of crap. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, we got some nice uh, remnants from an amazing uh, tournament here. Some of the larger ones, you can tell, burn the cement floor, and that one just popped and exploded. Sometimes it'll pop the cement right off the floor, too, and it'll make a little uh, squeak noise. That was a pretty good sport, even though I got disqualified. I kind of think it's bogus, but that's all right. But we're moving on, right? Now yeah. we're moving on to the first piece of the night, you guys. And this piece is for Wendy B. And we're making a sand ceremony vase, a beautiful vase. It's got a, I'm going to draw it on the floor. It's got a gorgeous uh, uh, taper to the inside and we're gonna be uh, I talked to her on the phone a few times and we designed the piece and picked the colors out uh, a sand ceremony is actually when uh, the two people who are getting married uh, take either some sand or some soil from their region of where they live and then during their ceremony their wedding ceremony they pour them together into a vessel and then that sand or dirt can't be separated. It's impossible to separate it and it should be like a marriage. It's impossible to separate for the rest of your days. You are married and it is an amazing ceremony. So this particular vase is going to be on uh, a uh, end or a side table, almost like a credenza up against the wall that's going to have their ceremonial dirt from each region in it on display. So uh, we're looking at some burnt reds, a very little bit of yellow in there. Uh, it's going to have some earth colors, some ambers, tobaccos, uh, and some burnt red. It's going to be a really uh, natural color. And we want there to be some clarity in the piece so that you can see the sand through the piece when it's on display. So that's how it's all going down. That was just laid out exactly the way it should be. That was incredible. Yeah. All the information. Yep. So I'm getting ready. I already picked my colors out, and I know the ones that are going to fall in perfectly how she wants them. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do it. The only thing that I think I might need would be the fluffer torch for that dropout when you're doing a, a vase. So if one of you guys want to grab the fluffer torch for me. Uh, yeah, I got it. Basically what that means is when I blow a, a, a sphere almost, I heat the half of that sphere up and I use gravity and I let the bottom of the vase start falling out and I use the fluffer torch, this big external torch, to heat that section up and it falls out into a beautiful hourglass shape. Uh, and then you blow the bottom out more and shape it, punny it up, and finish the vase. So that's how it's all going down, guys. Oh, uh, yep, I'm going to draw it up right here. And I, I'm only doing it on a chalk on the floor. I'm not going to be able to, and I'm a lefty, so I'm going this way. Not going to be able to do the colors on there, but let's do it right here. I'm looking at about probably 14 to 15 inches tall, and it's going to be like this, guys. And if I was straight, I'd be able to get it on center. Yeah, okay, everybody. The website is live. I put I the like link in the I like having a foot chat. on there because the foot gives a little bit more weight on the bottom of the vase. A little shading action. So that's the shape we're looking at. And that's that uh, hourglass beautiful form coming down the sides down to the bottom. Uh, so here we go guys. And I'm gonna probably do it on a, a regular inch and a quarter size pipe. We got the fluffer out ready to go. So it's looking good. So if you guys missed the intro in the beginning, you got the intro for a second time. So let us know what you thought about that. And let us know if you guys have questions. I saw a couple new people, two or three fresh viewers here tonight. 
We got viewers from all over the country, a few from outside of the United States. Um, we've been planning out our shows more and more, trying to give you guys the best information. Uh, but this is show 214. And we actually have our shows planned out through December at this point. We gotta do a couple more things, charity involvement, and we got our goblet shows planned and whatnot, first of the month. Uh, but if you guys have questions, let us know. Technical questions, we wanna educate you guys. That's what this show is about. Custom orders, education, and community, folks. I think Bess is gonna put the link. Uh, we're asking them questions. Yeah, here's another question we're going to ask you. I was like, they're asking us questions. Have you been to a U-Pick? That's tonight's question. Have you been to a U-Pick farm? Asparagus season here in Michigan is rolling. I know there's strawberries, apples, pumpkins. What are other things that you go picking for? And maybe even flowers. There are U-Pick flowers. That's like a new trend. So that's the question of the day. I believe that's we're doing a footer that tells you where to send your answer. If there's newbies on the show, let them know what's going on because tonight's giveaway beautiful. Yes. Here's, here's the first bolt and gather, Wendy. And if anyone else is watching on your family, driving through or whatever, you start with a bolt and gather about 30 or 40 pounds. And then you can get your bolt and gather and then you can get the bolt and gather. I'm adding my color patterns onto the surface right now, keeping in mind that I want some clarity. If anyone's new to the show, they may not understand what that question was about. We give away a piece every single show. We've got a really sweet whiskey glass from last week. We're going to make a really sweet something or other here later tonight. And by entering to win, you answer that question, send your answer to enews at glassacademy.com. That's how you enter to win the giveaway. And if there's anybody new, let us know in the chat. Really great to see familiar names as well, though. Carol, Tanya's in the house. What is happening? Mary Lou, Wendy. Michelle just confirmed that we are crazy. A little bit nuts. It's true, Michelle. Was that up for debate? It might have been, in her mind. We got John. What's happening? The inverted Fermi. Yeah, baby. That's cool. Tabitha, what is happening? You want this shaped up any particular way? Or see just it virtually. Ah. Karen's in the house. Okay. It's going to be a really nice piece. A little more involved in some of the pieces we do on the show. It's usually how custom orders go. But uh, it's going to be a beautiful shape here. We've put a lot of color work into it already. Shaping the color, getting this piece so I can blow a bubble into it. Blowing some air in the pipe. I cap it with my thumb, and here comes some moisture and air. Puffed out beautifully. Really nice. Spinning it for a little gravity action. Now, the thing you can't see is you can't see the true colors, especially like the gazing ball we made when reds look brown when they're hot, when they're above 600 degrees. This is probably still about 1,800 degrees, you guys. So, but there is a cool color pattern on it, but we're not done. We're getting crazy. We're going to put another color pattern right now. We got Julie back in the house after a year. Just found us again on the FB. Uh, we're streaming on uh, YouTube as well, folks. A little bit higher quality on YouTube. We got an equal split of people watching on both channels. Look at that sloppy application of color. That was nice. Oliver's got a snake on the end of that pipe over there. You gotta wrangle it sometimes. Wow. That was completely molten. By the time he walked over to the bucket, that long stringer of glass was completely solid again. Well, now I got those colors in there on the surface. I'm gonna add a few more colors, superheat the heck out of it, and then I'm gonna gather over it with clear crystal and encase all that color. You need another uh, colored bit? Nope, I don't. I'm just going to add right on to this. Okay. So what does encasing it do? What are the multiple reasons that you would encase something? Well, the first reason I encase it is to protect certain colors so that they don't change from the heat. The second thing I'm going to do is I would uh, 
encase it so that it really has a gorgeous sparkling effect. It makes it a little glassier. It's almost like a glossy finish. It's like a clear coat for like wood and stuff like that, you exactly. know? Exactly. Exactly. Not a matte give, Yeah, finish. it gives it a really nice reflective quality. And certain colors, we have probably, I think we've got, what would you say, Oliver, 40 different colors that we order? For, just different ones? Yeah. Oh, way more than more? that. More? 60? We probably have like ballpark 70, 75 different unique colors. All right, 70, 75. And that means that all those colors too, they're all made from, from different metals and minerals, but they melt at different temperatures and they do have different finishes to them where some of them have a metallic property, some of them have a really matte finish to them. A lot of the whites and that tobacco kind of brown have a really matte textures finish to them. And sometimes you have to encase the color. Some of them are super smooth though. I mean, there's a couple of products where we're using multiple colors on one piece where you can see a color that has a very glossy finish right up against a more like matte finish matte or, finish thank you yeah that's kind of the beauty of understanding at least in our studio the 75 colors we work with and the way they react with each other the way they piece together when you lay them next to each other there's a lot of technique and color, and it's something we're always trying to learn and grow with because a couple second, colors you? that aren't correct yeah. next to each other will totally turn a piece something you don't want. Thank you. This just went for a little uh, nice dunk of water on his hand. I've never seen that move before. You never have? No. Oh. Uh, when your hands feel real slippery, when the pipe feels slippery, uh, getting a little moisture in your hand makes you get a better grip on the pipe. I like it. Oliver, will you do me a favor and pull me a mold out? Yeah, what mold are you looking for? Oh, uh, that uh, 12 corner probably would be pretty good. We got enough. Oh, the one right in front of you to the right, the medium 12 corner, this guy right here. Down got here, it. Folks. Oh, hey there. <laughs> I guess that was looking a little bit small to me. Look at all those molds underneath the Marver for various different occasions, different products, different pieces and textures. None of those molds, not a single one of them, create a finished product. They're all just for texture, and you can use them like Chris did on the last piece. It looks like he might do here Eat as that well. up for me, Oliver. Yeah, for I got a it. color pattern Boy, as well. Up. I want to distribute those colors I added on there. Oliver bought me a nice chunk of that beautiful deep red, which is made with gold, uh, which is one of the most expensive colors you can work with, right up there with manganese, which is purple. Uh, and he brought a few of those colors to me. There's no purple in this piece, just the, the, the earthy transparency, a little bit of yellow, uh, and that beautiful red, deep red. So uh, I want to go in a mold and distribute that red throughout the piece by twisting it and giving it a really beautiful kind of uh, baskety kind of style. Baskety. Well, it could, the pattern could be very like almost a, I don't know, Basket? maybe American Indian style, but the colors are just very earthy. I think it's beautiful. It's gonna be a great pattern, guys. Let's take a gander. This is gonna be something, you see Heather's getting that angle from right on top. I'm limited to what I can do with the heat of the camera back here and what we're working with tech-wise. So how many of you guys have seen the shorts that Heather's been putting together that we've been doing? Uh, pretty much like a highlight reel and a recap of each of these shows. And we love going live with you guys for people like Alexander to be watching for her first time, to be asking questions and talking with you and giving you the commentary. But if you do miss the show, I think, how long are those videos usually? Like a half hour, Heather? The no, they're like 10, 12 minutes. Shorts are five minutes long. Well, I guess that's... Really, is it one piece then, or you do you show all the pieces? It's all the pieces. Okay. Well, she jam packs it in there. Dude, it's a highlight reel. It's a highlight it, reel. It, it gets serious. But it's super cool. If you guys have been watching those, really cool highlights of what's going on. Really well made, and we're hoping that those will get us a little more traction on the interweb. I got a quick little story while I'm reheating this, you guys. Uh, Michelle got a TV spot and she asked him if she could use one of our own highlight reels for the TV spot and Heather, you did it. 
and they were like, thanks for coming, Michelle Plusinski of the Glass Academy. Why don't we run our highlight reel now? And the guy was sitting at the top desk and it came on and it was so insane. The camera, the whole TV screen was your highlight reel and it was going on and on and everything and it was just going crazy. And then <laughs> it popped back to him sitting next to Michelle and he looked at the camera just like, wow! <laughs> I've never seen a high right high one. Real like that, that was unbelievable. <laughs> I was like, that's right, man, let us give you our reels. Well, Chris, Julie just said she loves your shorts. Don loves your shorts. Carol's loving them as well. Thanks. Really nice. There's, there's some new shorts, I just got them. I got two pair, I like them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just so everybody knows. <laughs> They're my new favorite shorts. And it kind of fits right in. Uh, they're probably on some of those shorts. Yeah. That I Heather does. I think that's the short connection. Really? <laughs> it's pretty short. <laughs> All right, I'm letting it cool down. I got a great Let's color see. pattern here. Can you give me a little angle with the pipe. Yeah. And what are the colors in there again? Uh, we got a red, a really deep, dark, kind of burnt red. And we've got uh, an amber, uh, like earthy amber, tobacco, uh, a little of that iris that really looks sweet, which reminds me, thanks for reminding me of that, Oliver. Hey, I got your back, Chris. Could you hit me with some reduction? Yeah. Go in and, uh, <laughs> and do this, thank goodness. We're a well-oiled machine back. today. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> so I'm bringing out a little bit of the milky beautifulness of that iridescent iris, which is even more silver nitrate that's in this glass. So there's a lot of precious metals. And if you guys aren't familiar with the way colored glass is made, it's made by natural earthly elements off the periodic table. That's the only thing that changes the color of the glass, which is something that I think is super sweet. Now I know that every element on the periodic table, all whole bunch of them, however many there are. Can you guys put that in the chat? How many elements are there on the periodic table? No 362? No Google. 365, just like no, how many days in a year? Yeah, that's how many days. Somebody discovered one element every day for a whole year and they made the table. <laughs> <laughs> so then what would happen if you threw one of those rings on your finger into the clear pot? The silver? Yeah, what would happen? Well, Silver nitrate uh, makes uh, iridescent uh, glass, so that's what it would do. It would kind of be like a silver veil, it's called. Interesting. That would be cool. But now if I had a gold ring and I threw that in there, which I'd be foolish to do it, but I don't have a gold ring anyway, so that's all right because I'm not a big ring guy when it comes to gold. It would turn the glass red, you guys. There you see a little highlight of the blue flags that we've received from the show, folks. Hey, you Oliver, is there the a, a paper in the fridge, you know? I think there is. Would you go check for me? I think there's one right over here in this if bucket. If you have one, that's even better. The one in the fridge could have some barbecue sauce on it, and that's yeah. real good. Nasty. All right, I got a nice gather of crystal over this and cased all that color. Now, we're going to Puff Town. Puff Town. I'm not talking about a hookah bar, guys, here in Dearborn. We're not <laughs> going to Puff Town. We're going to Puff Town where I'm going to puff this thing out into a beautiful shape and shape it into that vase. But everything I've done up to now has just been working on the color pattern. And uh, Wendy, I hope you're enjoying yourself because no paper. This is it. No paper? You want me to fold one up? Ah, I could probably do it without, but it would be nice if I had a little paper. But I'm there was some sort of, there was a really thin, flimsy one over there that was left out and was dry. Dry as heck, and I threw it away the other day, but I didn't see that original one we were working well, on. Well, I think we might be able to do one without a paper. Use the Marver here. Asking for a paper, you guys, is a wet newspaper. You fold about six layers of paper and you soak it in water, and it's the closest thing you can do to getting to uh, touching the glass with your hand. Some of you guys have seen us do that already. It's a way to control the glass when you're making certain shapes, but I think I got the skills to make this shape without uh, a paper, which is okay. Found you know the container the cool. paper's usually in. Yeah, that is the paper tin. 
Uh, comment from Bill Lutz over here. He was saying that he saw silver spark when it was shaved over the glass. And you can use silver in many different ways with the glass, but just a cool comment when we're in here. We got our metal shop back behind the studio here. And sometimes we'll be welding something back there or doing some real grinding. Chris makes these big giant uh, tree branches, forged tree branches, and he'll grind down uh, the branches and give them a nice finish to them. And that uh, metal dust will float over the edge and right above the glory hole it looks like sparklers are going or something. They'll catch and yeah. it'll be looking really cool. It's pretty sweet. Wendy Rose, this is so amazing. Wendy, welcome to the show. It's a beautiful piece to start off our show here. I think uh, I didn't hear from Michelle. She's not around anymore, but that gathering ball may be on the website, folks. And for any of those pieces that are on the table, any of the mushrooms, any of our highlighted products of the night here, they're on the Gathering Point page on our website, glassacademy.com. And that and our patrons, our VIP patrons, are what fund the show here. All right. Blow lightly. That's where the teamwork comes in big time. You saw it with the sphere in the beginning. Keep going. This is even, honestly, making a round sphere isn't the most difficult thing because the air, the glass likes to Keep going. cylindrical Good. size itself. When you're going for a shape like this, which this is the goal right here, there's a lot more prep. And what Chris is doing right now, he just hit the marber there. He's chilling that thick bottom on the base. You want to leave a lot of thickness down there so we can start to swing it out and elongate it without that piece thinning out way too much. And if you get the glass too thin, you're always on a beautiful line between thin and thick. If you get it too thin, you're going to have treachery. Below, Oliver. Keep going. Good. And the bigger that gets, the more heat that's radiating out of there. So as you make bigger pieces, a lot of times, anything bigger than this, and you guys have seen our big shows. We've done a couple of big shows every, uh, we're gonna do them every four months at this point, where we open up the large hole over there and do some large pieces. It takes multiple people to be shielding hands and opening doors, and the heat gets pretty hardcore on those bigger pieces. But I got the round vessel. Now what I'm doing, uh, Hunt, you know what I'm doing, Jake? Yeah. Tell him, man. Me? You can. <laughs> it's called the dropout. See, the dropout. Yep. And maybe tell them quickly so I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going to start. He's focusing the heat on a very certain portion of the piece. Probably about like two-thirds up the vessel, right up to the highest point of the shoulder. And this is where the importance of having doors that close fully and having a nice clean uh, hole here really helps in a piece like this because you can really point your heat right where you want it. But he's going to start just letting it swing. Using gravity and look, at it's already twice as long right now. A couple extra swings, he's going to give it a little extra heat. We got this fluffer out here. We call this the fluffer torch because it's a fluffy flame. This is for a little extra action if we need to. As he's angling it down, I could torch it, maybe a little air from Oliver. A little okay. three-person special. Hit it in the middle, Jake. A little higher. There you go. Notice how smooth he's turning, really watching the way it's falling down. It's a big boy. I asked her if it was bigger than 12 inches or 14 inches, would she be okay with that? And she was like, well, okay. <laughs> is she watching here tonight, Wendy? I believe she is. I just saw that comment a she second said, ago. Say something in the comment. Yeah. If you haven't already. So you're thinking that's about the height? I am because I am going to uh, swell out the bottom a little bit and flatten it so it's got a nice base to sit it on. Okay. Probably going to add a crystal base on it uh, and a crystal lip wrap okay. when the time's right. So you need me with the paddle? Uh, I'm going to not need a paddle yet. I'm going to need you for a bench blow first. Uh, while, I'm, while I'm flattening, you'll probably blow lightly for me, and then we'll find out how, how we go from there. Okay. 
It's all about the finesse, folks. Yeah, and you hear the way I'm talking to Oliver about this piece, you guys, because he's never blown a piece like this with me. So he's an apprentice glass blower, and he's learning every day, and he's got a great hand skills, and he's coming along, but you gotta let him know what's going on. And like he's being good to us, he's saying, hey, what's going on, you guys? Don't assume I know what you're doing. All right, See Oliver, that clean blow lightly. Move? He just pulled that taglier right out of the sheath. That's good, Oliver. Just capping it. All right, that looks good. All right, Beautiful. now we're gonna want Jacob a uh, foot. All right, it's gonna be a honker, so I'm gonna go Doesn't for it. Doesn't need to be too huge. I did get news from tech support that the warmer upper gauging ball with sparkle bling bling on it is live on the website. Folks, I want you all to know that I'm gonna be making a VIP video on how the furnace crucible works and the crack in the crucible and highlighting a little bit of that here in the near future. So if you guys are a VIP member, stay tuned to see that pop up on your YouTube feed. Right, Coming at you. Here comes the foot, guys. And this is a, just a base that makes it stand real nice. We want this piece to be sturdy, not flimsy. Well, oh, that's a beautiful bit, Jake. Nice and creamy. Let me give him a paddle. I'll just I'll finesse this up. Not yet. You just stay there, and I'll tell you when to paddle the bottom. Like this, you're going flat, just like a, just like a mug. Real gentle. Nice, crispy foot. I say it every okay, time, off. folks, but for the new people watching here tonight, working with clear glass like that is so nice. You spend no time with the glass cooling down, putting on color, trying to keep it hot. You just come straight from the furnace at 2,000 degrees, and it just falls on there like, like warm butter. Butter. Yeah. So I gotta cool this uh, base down enough that we can punny it up. That means so we can actually have the piece attached onto another rod so we can open up the top. Remember when we did hot, when we did uh, the start of the show with what's that tool? The warmer up there, we show off the tool and ask questions about it. Now that it's blown out, it's really got some beautiful transparencies in it, which are going to really highlight that dirt. It's got a nice basket effect to it. Nice basket weave. But I think we highlighted every tool, which is why we stopped. But one tool I know we didn't highlight is this uh, system right here that Chris is utilizing on a longer piece. He sets the pipe up there, he slides the piece in, and this helps with the leverage of a heavier piece. You can get that yoke up further, then you slide it back to take it out. It's really important for making bigger pieces. Ready when you are, Looks Jake. like Chris is getting a little bit sweaty. It's hot here, it's not winter anymore. <laughs> right on, just like on center, yeah. on a lathe, you guys. We'll make sure this is dead center. This is a honker. And that's the way Jake's going to be holding this piece completely by that little attachment we just attached. By so my two hands. Here we go. Push, Jake. Take her away. Let's we'll see that guy. All right. Perfectly on center. I'll let him heat that up for a minute, and I'll cool off for a second. Really cool pattern. And that's the beauty. This pattern's almost impossible to recreate. You can't just make another vase that would be identical in this pattern. It's so loose and floppy and just crazy with the color mixture. It's really beautiful. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing about having a custom piece made, guys, especially on the show. You can go back and watch this 10 times. I mean, you can tell the whole wedding party to watch this thing 
Yeah. You know, I think on the honeymoon, on their first night, the two of them should be watching this show. Yeah. Most Together. importantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a clear lip crack. <laughs> clear lip crack. But that is the cool thing about making something custom is that it's a one of a kind. There's nothing, it's not a production piece. It's a uh, piece that's specifically offhand, which means it's a uh, one of a kind uh, off the, hand, the glass blower's hands. Jake's gathering me up a lip wrap here. I'm going to give a little, uh, little opening on the lip, and then is that enough? Uh, I'd like a little more would be nice, just a little bit more. Un poco más. The shape of a lip wrap is super important. It's almost a little bit harder sometimes when you do clear glass because it's so hot. Chris has just got to control the angle of this and drip it on there just right, just like that. And look at how it falls off. It's still so hot it's going to drip off of the pipe like a snake. You got to gotta wrangle it. I'm wrangling it. So that lip wrap's going to tie right in with the clear crystal on the bottom. Clear crystal. I'll let you give him a paddle, Oliver. You got it. I am glad at the beginning of this, Chris, you did talk about what a sand ceremony is. Yeah. I think this is the second time since I've been on the show that we've done a piece like this. And for whatever reason, that first one, I just assumed that after like they put all their shared earth or dirt or sand in it, that like it got destroyed on purpose or something like that. You know, like they throw it on the ground and it destroys into a million pieces. Right. But that, and that's actually a, a Jewish ceremony, the Kiddush cup. Kiddush cup. Okay, I didn't know that either. Yeah, <laughs> they put it and they put this little cup inside a bag, a velvet bag, and then they stop on it and they scream some cool slogan or something, some <laughs> cool ceremonial name, and uh, and then they use those pieces to make another piece that is their ceremonial piece. Okay. Chris, I want you to know that Wendy said it's a great idea that they watch this uh, show on their honeymoon together and that she'll let them know. And this guy, Connor Daly, said he knows how he's spending his honeymoon now, too. Yeah. <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, you just might create a whole new tradition now. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. So this is the spot now when I'd really like to have a paper. <laughs> but I don't, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's about just getting my hands on the piece. Very lightly on. Oh, a little little happy Mother's Day from Carlin to all the mothers out there and Michelle and the other mothers of the Glass Academy. Robin There's and mothers Donna. everywhere. They all took Mother's Day off. So if you want to see me, come here. I'll be here on Mother's Day. Yeah, I'm going to be here on Mother's <laughs> Day. You. I was That's like, let's really go out to brunch <laughs> yeah, I got, I got your back, man. And she's like, I'm working. <laughs> well, it was funny because everyone who works at the mother took the day off. Yeah. And some who worked. So well, if you okay. guys think that that's cool that Michelle's working on Mother's Day, put a comment in the chat. <laughs> send flowers, send chocolates. You Soon know. enough, we will be able to ask for instant likes. Are you going to show them now? Should I? Oh, yeah. Should I wait? Let's wait for the finish of this piece. Oh, yeah. We got some cool tech coming up, you guys. We're always trying to bring in the new tech to you guys, and I hope you guys don't get overwhelmed because sometimes we get overwhelmed as artists. Well, I do need a Google expert. Like they're changing something with our Google ads, and I don't understand what language they're speaking. We need a Google expert, folks. Yeah. Help. Do you know Google stuff? That is beautiful. All oh, around yeah. the lip. That flared out perfect. My mic is a off. tender yeah, hand I right now. Look at how Google tender. Analytics, but we run Google ads. And it's We're gonna put a GA stamp on this thing. Uh, I'm gonna hand sign it on the bottom. All right. That looks beautiful. That is incredible. Let's hold Dude. this up for the camera. Are you serious? <laughs> one beautiful looking face. All right, we're going to get a little one more deep flash on it, and then Oliver's going to glove up. So all we got to do now is break it off of the pipe. <laughs> Whoa. 
<laughs> I, th I think we got more room on the bottom right for height. Oliver, two-time glove job here in one show. Big glove day. He's a champion. You know, sometimes we don't glove up for the show. It's true. Sometimes you're gloving up every time. It's true. Here we go. This is the moment of truth. A little bit of agua. It's like... Well, don't grab it yet. Let go. I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to take it off the bench and hand it to you, Oliver. You can go over by the... Right over by the door. There you go. All right? Lifting up on top. A moment. Wow. Yep. It's fine right there. We'll get the rest up top. I'll push her in. Beautiful. Yeah. Woo! -hoo! That's a wrap. <laughs> there you go. It was a oh. gorgeous looking piece. I was super happy, super happy to make it. Super happy to have the whole process pretty much uh, permanized on the internet forever. Permanized. If that's a word, that's it. <laughs> what is Heather but, telling you to do? Yeah. Oh, let me see that. High way. five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Somebody was telling us to high five, and we did it, guys. But we love that that was great. So now we're moving on to the next piece. Okay. What's our next Ooh, piece? Table, just take a deep breath here real quick. Woo-hoo! I mean, right. geez. All right, come this way. Let Michelle do some, uh, whatchamacallit. Housekeeping. Yeah. Someone explained this as housekeeping, and I hate housekeeping. But then this is like, I like housekeeping. housekeeping. It's not like cleaning and changing the bed sheets. It's, did you enter our contest to win? Our lucky winners, I put the different fabric down so you could really see the colors. Check that baby out. The dust is free, uh, but this is like a rainbow pattern. It's on the foot, super cute, super cute. And tulips from the farm, I went to cut down the stems and they all started falling apart. So blown up tulips, we call them catch a mustard variety. Back to the table, some of you have chosen the specialty ones. Um, then we've got the full table. What else did I want to talk about? Something. Oh, do we want to go over there? Yeah. So Chris and I went out and we're eating at this fancy schmancy tech super cool place that's by the Renaissance. We have to be doing a day trip. And we looked over and they had this really cool thing. I'm like, what's that? And they're like, hold it up. Why, it's our social media counter. And I was like, what? Oh, Check it out. Um, Want to hold that one? We will one. plug it in. Jake's nice, dirty paw prints are already on it, so we're christened it. Straight from France, FedEx called me at 11 o'clock at night to verify. Paris. It was from there. But Facebook, we'll hook it up. It will recognize everyone we have, and then it will, Lucy's calling, it will YouTube, like, when it will link, and when you like us, if you haven't liked us, it will flip. I think she might know that we stream every Tuesday night for 214 shows in she a went, row. She was just checking out. She's really excited. But she got the axe. Okay. <laughs> Pretty darn cool, though. So you can then live hit the button and watch the so ticker cool. flip. It's going to be really cool. I was really bad, though. I like was like, is this real? So I went and followed the site. We watched the number flip. I'm like, so cool. And then I unfollowed him. I'm like, does it go in reverse? But no. Did it? No. Oh. So some tech person <clears throat> fast will probably be setting these up. <laughs> I think they need to link to the phone, so we'll figure that out. Or an yeah, iPad we'll or something. Okay. So it looks like Back some of those action. mushrooms have sold off the table. Maybe we can have Oliver. Do you want to talk about a couple of your favorite mushrooms on the table? Real I quick? can. T I can talk about some of my favorite mushrooms on the table Represent here, real quick. A little bit. So Michelle did a quick job of removing the one and dones. Looks like Dicro's gone, but Oliver, I'll let you take it away as I prep for this piece. Okay, okay. okay I'm trying to remember which one Jake talked about already. I know he talked about number five because that's a big favorite of mine, so I'll, t I'll talk about number nine here. I'm a big fan of these guys that have a lot of depth of color to them. I don't know how close to the camera I can get. I'm hoping Bess is going to Bess is going to tell me. But if you see this green here, how we have all these different shades going on, this looks like a custom-made green mix of color that was Van Gogh swirled up. 
and it just makes such a great depth of color and makes it a lot more dynamic to me than, than just like one singular color swirled around. And then to top it off, we've got a blown bubble cap. This is a Jake and Matt special where Matt's bringing over a bubble, laying it on top, Jake's cutting it off to seal it together, and then they're putting more color on top of that so it's got some bonsai tree texture going on. I absolutely love these guys. I would like to know the creatures' names. What, do, you, do you have them memorized, Bess? So the yellow one is Percy. This is Percy? Yep, and that's Percy's parasol. This is his parasol? Okay. Let me talk about these guys. So, Bess, tell us about these guys. Okay, let me talk about these guys. So, Bess did an amazing job pairing these guys up together because Percy has these light green, almost yellow colored eyes. And we had a yellow and green mushroom to go with him. And Percy's a little bit of a unique uh, slug here. He's slimy. He's got some extra slimage going on there. I, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. That is, Percy's got a lot going on for him. And then we have this wonderfully twisted, like really straight mushroom where it, the cap's not angled at all. Some people like it when they're angled, but this one, super crisp, super straight. And then we have a nice twist going all the way around it as well. The scale yeah. is Weatherby. Weatherby? Weatherby. Weatherby. And that's his wax cap. <laughs> Just a type of mushroom. Is wax cap a type of mushroom? It is. I did not know that. I use alliteration. I don't actually know anything about mushrooms. Um, this is Weatherby. He's got a real popular color combo, though, that a lot of people I've heard in the gallery talking how much they like the pink-bodied snails. And I absolutely, this looks like a Joey special mushroom, if I had to guess. Super, super thin cap. This is one that, honestly, I think I was assisting Joey on because these make me nervous because it's a real rush to get them into the oven so they don't break so they're so dang thin. But Joey cranks these out like you wouldn't believe and did an amazing color pattern on the top there. It probably looks a little bit more white than anything on camera, but there's some really awesome pinks um, and some light greens, very floral. Let me get these guys back that's on here. Teddy and that's his toadstool. <laughs> hey, I had fun this week. I can, I can always tell when Bess makes a table because she's so excited to talk about the table and she has so much fun with it. I, I just got to be honest, I absolutely love like the traditional color style for the mushroom. And I absolutely, I know I, I made Jake talk about it earlier because I can't not talk about it, but how the cap color fades right into the white stem, I am absolutely in love with mushrooms like these. All right, folks. Thanks, Oliver. That sounded pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> this is the plan, folks. This is per Linda Brodka sent me an amazing email with a cool mushroom idea for a cup. We're going to try two different styles. This will be the first one. This is going to be all clear as a tester outer so you can see the drink when it's completely blown with a foot all in one bubble and a gentle tiny opening on top so you can fit a straw in there and drink your drink. This one's going to be a whole nother situation. We'll get into that in a minute. I like it. This is quite experimental, folks. This may or may not make it, but if it does, it's going to be for sale. All right, got Joe Smith in the house. He said it's a hot Joe. Oh, Joe Smith. Do you guys remember who Joe Smith is? Yeah. We have to take a video clip of him playing the music at the 200 show and incorporate that in our like closing credits. Me and Joe Smith. Check it out. Joe right here, he's in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the camera's not in my pocket, so I was like, hey, whatever, that's cool. But uh, let me zip that up. Joe actually played for our uh, 200th show. He's an amazing uh, musician, plays all over Detroit, me and Joe Smith, and you see him headline him anywhere in any uh, bars or restaurants or clubs. You're gonna wanna go check him out. He's unbelievable. Uh, one of the best ad-lib, crazy, 
musicians I've ever known. And he was my neighbor too for a long time. He plays a lot uh, in outdoor patios and it's a great this time of year when you're really dying to get outside. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing. This is gonna be funky. It's all one bubble, so that's kind of the trick of this piece. I'm leaving some thickness on the bottom. What's right, ladies and gentlemen, I put everything in there but forgot to hit make it live. So the gaze and ball is Take now some live. real light pressure, real light. Good. Holy mushroom action. It's like you're making it in reverse. Yeah, totally. Who used to say that? Robin used to say it. He'd be like, Robin Hello? would be, Robin and uh, Batman and Robin. He'd be like, good. I thought you meant the Robin that was here. Yeah. That's what I thought too at first. Well, I didn't want to confuse anybody. I've never <laughs> seen her in that little spandex outfit that Robin used to wear on Batman and Robin. <laughs> but if she has one, Robin, come on. <laughs> but he'd say something like, holy mushrooms, Batman. And then you'd be like a pow. And then there'd be a <laughs> mushroom splatted up against the wall. You guys Talking like the, the, the old, old, old school Batman movies. Batman. Yeah. That's <laughs> always great. I love Batman and Robin. Here we go. See how this works here. some subscribers growing there is a little bell that Hello? you guys can hit and when you hit that bell it will let you notify on youtube when Good. we go live so in case you forget tuesday night you'll be like hey they're live now it's strange because i can't really pull from the bottom there i'm doing that but it's getting thinner and thinner it's getting pointier and pointier so it's just strange very strange folks it's very strange you're seeing the wheels turning right here if Live we see if we see smoke come out of the ears yeah and exactly. we got something to be concerned about hello He's obviously never made one of these, so he's prototyping it up, folks, and it's looking pretty cool Good. so far. That's getting darn close. The only thing is that it's just getting thinner and thinner on the bottom, so I'm going to flatten it down real tight with a cap and a paddle, maybe a capaddle, and then uh, we'll put a little tiny foot on it for some stability. You want to kerchow it? How many other things could that be, folks? Kerchow it? When you take a look at it, what do you think what else it could be? I'm making it up. <laughs> Shape wise, personally, I think one, it could be a giant baby pacifier. For sure. Looks like one. Also, could be knocked right off and used as a sock darner. A what? Sock darner. A, a How what? Do you darner a sock. You take that, you slide it inside the, the sock, and then you use a. What? Needle. Oh. Thank you. I was trying to get it out. It you needle. got the word darner and a yeah. needle. You got a paddle and a cap. <laughs> A paddle. Pap? A paddle. Oh yeah. That's good. Look at that. Look at that. Why would you look at that? It almost doesn't even need a foot. How about a punte? But I think we probably should. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I think just a punny. Leave it clean. Really? It's dangerous, but hey, it was already experimental to begin with. I didn't think it would get this far. Can I just get a little puff from you and we'll try and push that out a little bit, straighten her up? Yeah. Yeah, it's all clear. Low. A little more. So Wendy B, remember, 
that if you're uh, taking Perfect. note that it's show number 214 tonight's show that has that beautiful vase we made for you on there uh, so that down the road you down can, the road you can reference it what happens down the road yeah something happens something down the road down the road all kinds of things happen down the road yeah there's a lot pretty of pretty much like, everything kind of happens down the road doesn't yeah. it yeah because if it's not happening right now it's down the road it happens down the road yeah it's true getting this puppy on the punty don't confuse puppy and punty folks nope. Ooh, it's coming off I think you got it I don't know boy that was crazy I think you're gonna want a deep flash. Give it the upper. Yeah, we gotta press it down. Here, I got it. Just press the punty down on the ground real quick. Because it's just barely touching. It's it's such a thin bottom, I don't even want it on there more. All right. I just kind of felt it come off and then it reconnected itself. And, unless maybe it was the handle. You know, the little handle little that bad. slides? Yeah. Feels like it's on there pretty I darn good. I thought that good. was welded on. I was gonna say, before you even said that, that it's more about feel. When you think something funky's going on like that, it's totally about the feel of the glass. You could not even be looking at it and know that it didn't come off right. And it was actually the feel of this, it seems, on the handle that caused the treachery. Is that a loose handle on there? Oh, it's just a loose guard. Loose guard, okay. Is that something that when somebody gets crazy, they're called a loose handle? I think I've heard that. Or is it a loose cannon? Cannons don't get loose. Well, that's why it's so bad. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> it just falls off its holders on, on the yeah. off the boat. Yeah. <laughs> that's dangerous. It's like the Oregon Trail, but, you know, it's the wheel right, of a cannon. Right, well, loose cannon. What was the other one? I think you said loose handle. Loose handle. Oh, yeah, loose handle. <laughs> I got the comments right there if you need uh, some other <laughs> stuff to talk about. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to ponder what's going on down the road. Now that's a cool looking to be a cool uh, whiskey snifter kind of shape, but we're going to mushroomify it a little bit more here where we give it the old Sofietta Puff. You're gonna have to really drill this one into your head after this because I see a UFO so, so badly. You're right. Well, we gotta stay on topic. All the way down, you're totally right. We gotta stay on topic and keep it mushroom, but we might want to revisit this for. I agree with you. On our next UFO, isn't there like a UFO holiday in Area 51 day? <laughs> I don't it's know. On the 51th day of July. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's like the 13th floor. This is where I was saying, use the torch on the bottom side of the mushroom. To let it come down? Well, just so that you can, while you're puffing, the top's colder than the bottom. You puff it, press oh. in, and it sinks down and makes that mushroom shape. There is such thing as World UFO Day. World UFO Day? It is on June 24th. June 24th? That's just before my is birthday. Is right around the corner? What? There's a UFO day? Yeah. I saw a question from Sharon that was asking how many espressos we've had today. Sharon, I actually turned the machine on at like 535. Oh yeah, said, I forgot about who that. Who wants espressos? And everyone was like, me, me, me. We and all then, said no. And then, no, I had four espressos to make. And then we forgot. Because all of a sudden it was like, mic check, mic check one, two. I, pretty cool. Sharon, I didn't have any espressos. I am just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the funkiest glass shape I've ever made. 
but it's also really cool to think about the bar coming in and doing like a glass like this yeah for a special drink that's got some uh, a mushroom in it powder on it and some smoke bubbles landing in it yes i'm letting it fall down so i can hold it up here it comes that's a straw special if you could drink out of that without a straw whoever purchases this if you can send a video onto the glass academy addicts page of you drinking out of it successfully without using it's a straw then you gotta figure out how to do your drink so that you can make it look like a mushroom like something totally It'd have to probably white foam over the top. You'd probably have to have that special gene that some people have that you can make your tongue into a straw like this. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and then if you could do that, you could stick your tongue down in the glass and suck out some liquid. Go go gadget extendo. Yeah, yeah. Post <laughs> that to the Glass Academy addicts. You are forever an incredible person. <laughs> How about a stamp? Stay. You better get that out of there. <laughs> I mean, Had him jumping. I don't. I don't want Chris to lose his mojo. No, I'm really flowing. <laughs> I went down the road. <laughs> Let's see if I can line this one up best next to the picture here. Pretty, pretty darn close. So that's a great warmer upper and a nice classic clear baby right there to get going. The next one we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit different with color and a little more radical. Whoa, we got our brand new torch here. So this is the GA stamp, guys. Stands for, what if you can guess for? what the GA stands for, and put it in the live feed. We wanna know. Yeah. And it, it could be something else. It could be uh, something else. <laughs> GA stands General. for Great Acronym. Yeah. Whoa. That's a GA. I like that. Come on, baby. It's a thin bottom. I'm really hoping this thing pops off nice and tender. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Uh, are you polishing it? I need this out of here. Holy fluffer. Polishing. Polishing. Burn. Take her home. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. All right. That's pretty cool. Very hey, nice. Good job, Jake. Pretty tight. Tight, folks. That was interesting. So now we'll recap and we'll get our brains right as Michelle takes it over in the housekeeping section. This would be more like the GA living room. Yeah. Whoa. Welcome to the GA living Show room. There apparently are speed bumps <laughs> in the road on our way over to the table. Got to slow them down. We're going to uh, spin the wheel in a second, and the contests are rolling. We got some newbies on here. I absolutely love it. And the reason we asked the question, so first, Tuesday's question was, do you have a local winery or, um, in your area? What type of wine do they serve? White wine won the contest, which really kind of surprised me, but maybe local wineries in Michigan have white wine. I don't know. Someone asked what ice wine is, and it's a really sweet summer, not summer, dessert wine. So you eat it cold, you eat it cold, drink it cold. It's super tasty. Okay, so we got lots of answers. And one, one of the reasons we ask these questions too, like this week's question is about you pick, is we want you to go out and explore in your neighborhood and tell us about where you live. Um, if you have a winery, a couple people said I've never been, maybe this year you'll go. And I'm thinking the winner of this stunning glass here said she's never been where she mentioned, so maybe she'll go. And so tonight's winner, do Heather, can you spin the wheel? Yes. 
So the winner of this one is, let me make sure I get it right. Who that got Sunday. it? Sunday. Loretta Richards. All right. Richard. So Loretta, you will get a little uh, email that will tell you about next steps. And we ask that you pay shipping and we'll get that shipped right out to your doorstep. The contest doesn't tell me where you live, so I don't know if you're local. If you're local, all you do is come and pick it up. Okay, and let's do the next one before we do that. We're gonna, the next one was about plants. And Bess, will you like pan over this table for a second? I asked, hello. I asked about, do you have live plants in your home? What is this? It's a straw. <laughs> hello, excuse me? <laughs> what? The reason I asked if you had plants in your hand like these is because we have some new products coming out. They're these super cool, really awesome snakes that could live next to your plant and look really cool. Uh, there are two versions, uh, opaque and a transparent version. And so that's why I was asking the question on Sunday. And the winner of that one, the question was, do you have plants in your home? and do you put them on plant stands? Because sometimes on plant stands, these make great filler in the area. If your plant's draping over, if you just have a space and nothing to put on it. So Sunday's E! News winner for a $25 gift card is Katie Stanley. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, and I think we have one more video and the video is of The big, yeah. So we're gonna pop in a video, and when we turn around, we're gonna be back at the glass blowing. Welcome back, folks. I want to highlight again the snakes here. I didn't listen. I was, I was busy thinking about the next piece to what Michelle said, but uh, in pointing out these snakes, she may have mentioned that they're going to be uh, a pre-sale situation. As many of you know, when we've released products that we really like and we're really excited about getting into the gallery, we've done them as pre-sales, so we know which colors are popular, which ones to make in preparation so we don't have extras or a small crew we need that help to uh to dial in our production line so pre-sales i think you guys will get a little bit of a discount if you do uh the pre-sale on release day vips who pay 4.99 a month uh and subscribe to our youtube channel will get first pick of the pre-sales so say you picked out the purple ones you'll get a ticket to pick out your purple one on the website you go there you take your pick then we release it to the general public. So if you're not already a VIP member for five bucks, that's a pretty cool perk and we're doing some really cool videos. Like John commented on earlier, I had mentioned that I'm gonna go over the pot and what's going on in the furnace with a little bit of a crack situation and explain some technical equipment talk to you guys. That's a private YouTube video for our subscribers, but the snakes are out of control and there's a huge learning curve. Uh, we've been doing these for about a year now, I'd say. We've been toying with them and getting the head shaped right trying them with eyes, trying them without eyes, squishing them different, laying down the tails different. And we got a really nice selection of every color uh, that we offer here and it's gonna be super tight. So that's gonna be pre-sales next week. Get excited for it. Think about how they're gonna sit in your home. We got cactuses coming up, fresh cactuses. The season tis upon us. I'm glad we can talk about them now. I know. It's been feel like we were like hiding something for a while. So we're gonna go for the next mushroom piece here, and this one's gonna be uh, how we do the, the bases of the standalone mushrooms. So I'll have you grab a set of tweezers with me and we'll pull opposite directions. You got it. 
we'll punny it up, throw a little frit down in there, and then I'm gonna have Chris bring over a larger bubble. So actually, you're gonna need to do the mezzo stampo on the bubble with Oliver. Okay. So we can collaborate on this piece maybe. So you're saying I'm dropping a mezzo stampo foot? Can the redhead in the I'll room get a cue into what a mezzo stampo is? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay. I'll figure it out to fly. <laughs> figure it out how to fly. Um, maybe we pass that off to Oliver and then you can bring over the bit and I'll do the mezzo stampo. Oh, I'm just trying to think about how we're putting it on there, but I mean, I can do just the mezzo Just putting it stampo. on there, puffing it out, angling it, and getting it hot. Yeah. I can do a mezzo stampo on the bottom of it. Do you guys remember the goblet show that I did the mezzo stampo cup with the flare that Sue re-gifted to me for my birthday? Yeah. So, do you want that metal stop to be like in an amber color or something? Go in the white first, get white dots on the tip, and then put a layer of blue on top of the white dots so that when we open up the bowl, you look down into it and there's white spots and it's got blue on the outside. And where are the fins of the metal stop? The fins are on the bottom of the cup and they'll be all blue. And then the cup will be open like this, real wide. Yeah, so when I blow the cup out, Let's draw this up for everybody. Let's draw it up. Take a look at the Get flow. The chalk. This is going to be an intense piece. I got to give Michelle a price for that cup and the straw. So this guy, here's the blowpipe. There's the neck. And there's the bubble. Right? Yep. This is going to be the mezzostampo. Right. And then you want white up here. No, white would be in the bottom down here, dots of it on the inside. So you like it's so like I a, would put down white dots first, then I would put blue all down here. And then no uh, brown, clear up no here. Amber. I'm doing amber on the foot. So you're doing amber that's gonna be down here like this. Yes, and I'll have blue frit in here and, and, and brown on the very bottom. And we're dropping that on, but this isn't gonna be open. Nope. Okay. Just open for the frit. And that's getting dropped on. Hot. Yeah. I mean, if you want, it's gonna be a shape that's gonna be bulbous. Just, yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. Take it so, as she comes. So Oliver. we should start it. Uh, no, I need I need help with the tweezers and the so you're first. So your thing first when yours done. You I don't know about it. you yeah. folks at home, right. but I am 100% in the loop. I, I feel like I got this one in the bag. I can't spell mesostampo, but I'm pretty confident I could do it. Mesostampo is when you take a bubble, like so, okay. and you take a glob of hot glass and put it on the end, and you rough roll it on there and shape it so it's nice and symmetrical, and you go to flash and you jam that down into an optical mold so that it puts optics only on the bolt blob that's on the end of the piece. So you add an extra mass onto a bubble? Yes. Okay. And does it become a mesothample once you hit your optic mold? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think this is going to be one of the craziest drinking vessels I've ever produced. White and cobalt. Right. And the bit that I'm putting on the mesothample is clear. Right. So it'll like get the blue really looking good. So he's making the base of the piece, guys. I'm not exactly sure what the process is gonna be, but it's gonna be pretty sweet. Here we go. You might need some air. Nah. Nice deep grabs. Okay. Good. You want to do one more to kind of? Nah. I think that's going to be fine. Leave it kind of bow tied? Yeah. Okay. It's mushroomy, is what it is. It's organic. So then we'll take a little Maurice. Coming yeah, right a up. A punny right after that. Once you buy it, I can start mine. Yeah. 
You're not going to be going so big with this that you want it on a counterweight, right? Negative. I mean, correct. <laughs> It's flat. Looking good, looking good. Very mushroomy. So now we're gonna give it a little extra thickness on the bottom for the punny because after stretching those uh, mycelium tendrils out, it gets a little bit flimsy, but no longer. It's 10 points in glass ball right there. Um, and then before, would you grab a spoon and put it over here by the frit? Got it me? already. Oh, look at this guy. Egg tower. Cool. So yeah, I'm going to put blue frit on the inside here. Look at this punny. This guy. Woo -hoo -hoo. Sir, you are welcome. I'll just focus on getting Fred in here and you and Chris make it happen. Can I start? Yeah, you'll be pretty much just bringing him like a ball probably. Well, he'll tell you how big, but a really soupy clear glass. So the idea behind doing this mezzo stampo super Italian technique is that it's going to be like the gills on the bottom side of the cup. And then when you look into the cup, we're doing it kind of reverse like we would do one of our wall discs. You have to think about the color opposite because the color is looking from the inside of the bubble. When you look into the glass, it'll have white spots on top of blue, a deep cobalt blue shroom. Straight from the jungle. And I'm meanwhile just gonna open this up a hair and then pour some blue frit in there and just melt it in just enough that it's got this line of action going down the middle. Looks like the perfect size. I'm gonna hop right in front of you in a sec, Dad, and get that blue right now. So that's going to be like the mushrooms dropping its spores into the jungle floor. I almost poured it right on yours. I freaked out. See how we were talking about at the beginning of the show, that tobacco has that matte finish next to the amber that has the glossy, glassy finish. Glossy, glassy? Same thing, maybe? Glossy glass. Hmm. While you have a second, Oliver, would you mind bringing over a stamp and we'll just stamp it right now? Yeah. All right, I got this thing coated with some good uh, color. Going in, Jake. Yep. So I'm yep. shooting a bubble in here, and then Oliver eventually, when he's done doing this, will bring me a bit. Over the back's fine. Thank you. Yeah, how big you think it? Okay. And we also are starting up our parties again. 
So if you are coming into town and you got six people and want to get together and take a private class, you can do so. We have space for you. We got an event coming tomorrow at 1 p.m. They're going to hang out, go some class. Yeah, we've been teaching a lot more classes, folks, and I gotta say, it's a beautiful thing now that both Matt, Oliver, and Joey are teaching select classes because you get such a wide range of knowledge and perspective from each individual right instructor. I think that's a that was great time. Uh, yeah, I think a little bit more. A little more. Cut that, you can cut it off uh, and just gather right over that. That was a nice drop, though. It's just a warmer upper. Warmer upper. All right, the clear mushroom right. glass with straw is live. Clear mushroom glass with straw we is live on the, the website, folks. First yes. come, first serve. Seen on the gathering point. Linda, I apologize Beautiful. that I didn't uh, make that, just make that a custom order for you, but I didn't honestly think it would work out that well, so. Um, it's on there. Keep it good. Keep it I think like we're it all going to be going over to Don Great's house to gaze upon that gazing ball. Okay. Nice. Nice and juicy, Oliver. Second tries the charm. Yeah. Got to line it up real clean like that. He's using the back of the jacks. It's pretty much a marver. It's a, it's a portable marver. Got it lined up real tight. Going to this guy. Yep. <laughs> nice. Got her. So now it's coming the really tight work of blowing it out. You can't just blow it out. He's going to be finessing the bottom, finessing the middle, finessing the neckline. And then we're going to have to get it completely molten again to drop it over top like we're putting on a blown foot. All right, replying to Dana of the VIPs. Dana, we wanted to send an email, but uh, YouTube has a way of sending it to you. And I believe they send it to you email, but I'm not 100% certain because we don't see it. So we put it in the chat, maybe you'll see it there. I am not quite sure if I'm being honest. But from our end, it's sent. What's the question? How they know where the VIP, like, because it's not coming from, we're not sending it, YouTube's sending it. So whatever email you signed up with is my guess that's the email you're gonna find. Yeah, you in. can go to your YouTube account and go to your notification settings, just like any app or any, uh, uh, account you hold on the technical internet service and <laughs> you can adjust your settings so I'm sure you could probably even get text notifications if you wanted but you go there and you say shoot me an email when they post some sort of specific content. Hello Joey. Yeah and I have I'm to say Joey, we Oliver, I'm sorry, this blow. past week. Doesn't happen Keep often going. but let you know that we're human. Look at this. Keep going. Nice move. Good. Super nice move from Chris there. By Ooh. stuffing in the mold, the clear was a little bit wide for that particular mold, so the very bottom didn't have any mushroom gill texture. When you do a muzzle stomp, you always cut off the bottom. Oh, really? Yep. Because you're always your best optics are going to be on the sides, so you can bring the sides down to the bottom. Mmm. There's some cool tech to know. That is really cool tech. All right, now we're looking at trying to get this thing puffed out kind of even so I can drop it as a drinking vessel on the top of this mushroom base. This is a lot of work for one uh, shroom, folks. Well, it's one a, shroom cup. It's a special shroom cup. It's the live feed. It's a special yeah. shroom cup. That kind of sounds like you might be drinking something crazy out of it. Oh, you'd have Mushroom to. Mushroom tea. Yeah. No hot stuff. Cold, cold brew mushroom? Cold brew mushroom Hello, Oliver. Fungi. That's beautiful. It doesn't even need to be all the way. Stop. Looks great. Oh. 
blow. Oh yeah, it's gonna be mushroom. Keep gill. going. Fantastic. Keep going. That looks so good. Keep going. Good. This is interesting. I've never spent so much time holding on to this before, so I've a little bit overheated the uh, frit on the inside here, and it's got a really interesting texture. It's still a little spotty, but it's more connected to the body. It doesn't look as loose, but it's some this, really crazy this, depth. Do you think that's good enough to put on there? I think it looks amazing. It's perfect. So am I gonna, I'm gonna tough it out more when it gets on there? Yeah. So I gotta tighten the neck up a little, and then get the whole thing hot, and then we'll go for it. I'm gonna take it into the teardrop next year. Yeah. All right, so you get ready. I'm ready on the next tee. That looks just, looks just swell. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Harder. Good, look at that. All right, here we go. I'll be ready for you. I'm gonna give a little We're love going, to these tips. To the hot town. Just so I can handle this next heat. Just the one right now? Yes, you better be ready. Ready. Real light. Good. Oh my god, that looks cool. So now instead of being a Chris. foot, you're gonna flare it open completely flat. I'm gonna try and cut it perfectly smooth or knock it perfectly smooth and buttery and then just kind of give it a puff and open it up a little bit. That's like a mushroom wine glass or something. I think some kind of mushroom sour could, ow, that is a hottie, sorry. That's just paper thin too. Probably gonna take it down some more, pull it out a little bit more. Looking good. Baby, be nice. Oh, yeah. Doing any lip wrap on this, Jake? It's paper thin, and I think it should stay like that. Yeah. Okay. That barely came off perfect. Oh, no. didn't come off perfect. Can you seal that up? I wonder if I could trim it. That's it real, pretty you deep. It real slow. That spin super slow and shrink, shrink down on itself. Bet you the torch could do it too. We got a crack about halfway down the side of it. That, the cup portion that Jake's working on right now is very, very thin. Whoa, that's mushroom like. That was crazy looking. That was like resealing itself while you were unsealing it. That was really funky. Did you get through it? I think. Below it? It's just not a very clean cut, but... It's a mushroom, man. You don't want to have a perfect cup. It's organic. Yeah. Just help me out with the paddle. Paddle? Super tender. It's good. Wow. Saved it. We're in business. We're gonna do one more nice light tender paddle. Yeah. What? No. We got ten minutes. 
ultra light. I got it. No, I know what it is. I'm making a button. Good. Let's do it one more time. Like a dragon button. That button is cool. I don't really know how to tenderly paddle you when it's walking on me like the that. The best you can. Just, okay. You keep a steadier hand, less pushing up on it. You just hold steady and let it flop off of you a little bit more. Okay. Look at that. It's perfectly is cool, straight. It looks like a pretty darn cool, like a martini. Yeah. Like the mushroom martini. Yeah. It's perfect. That's what it is, the mushroom martini glass. Oh my God. And check out the inside. How do the it looks amazing. white spots look? That's super sweet. We got, we got to do like a limited run of these, Jake. We got to do like five. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Any reduction? No reduction. How about one more paddle, though, just to be certain? Okay, if everyone saw that, John is saying it shows up as from YouTube, not in Glass Academy Good. email. So if you're a VIP, it's shooting from the YouTube app. Very nice, very nice. Mushroom martini. <laughs> That is frickin' cool. It should be the mezzo mushroom martini. The mezzo shroom mushroom martini. Is it mushroom mezzo. margarita? What? Mushtini. A mushtini? Mushtini? All right, let's get it off the pipe. That is frickin' cool. Perfect punny on here, too. Oliver. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Those are not preheated at all. Anyway. All right, all right. Yeah. Nice work. The whole team. That's freaking sweet. Woo. Very cool. Yeah. That's super exciting. No. We gotta get going on the giveaway. Hurry! Okay. Speed giveaway. Speed Spid giveaway. Away. You grab him. The giveaway. You making it? I thought I thought I was making it today. If you got an idea. I did mention him doing a mushroom. Can you do it in five minutes, Oliver? We can find out really quickly. In about <laughs> five minutes, we'll know. <laughs> why don't you do what uh, I was thinking about doing, which is a branch right off the whole thing, and that would be the giveaway would be a. Uh, a stem just like the stem you made but open so that it was a uh, mushroom shot glass and it just opened and you pull that organic bottom like you and him did on it put a bit on it punny it open it up and it's organic and it's a mushroom like a mushroom stem with no cap that you do a shot I think on. that's perfect it does sound cool it does sound cool you're me doing, doing that you're doing it okay here I got your pipe right here for you my friend <laughs> All right, here we go. there you go all right. Hey, don't put any heavy uh, cinder blocks on Oliver's back, but he's up and he's mm. ready to go. Woo! This is how it goes. This is how it goes for apprentices, guys. This is kind of strange looking. Get a shot of that. <laughs> Michelle with the special cart action. That's what happens when you work on a computer. You get comfortable. <laughs> Is that what that shelf's on the cart for? Yes, I was walking around. All right, the mushroom is like live. Like <laughs> it looks like I Anyway, folks. <laughs> Great to see some names. Still more popping up here. Mary Ann's watching. The other Marianne asked if the snakes will be on the website, and next week on the show, they will be. We got a big shot glass here. So next room week for is snake night? Yeah, snake crew sales. And next week is also donation charity. We've been talking with Tanya. She's got some great veteran organizations. We're going to pick one. She was telling about how every 22, every day, 22 people, veterans commit suicide. Mm. 
So for the garden show, it's pre-orders. We want to make a nice big impact. So get your snake ready. We'll have cactuses featured on the table, some garden splashes. Cactuses and snake pre-orders. Yeah, take one second real quick. Where are you going? Cool this pipe down. It's really hot. Yeah, from diving in there deep. I got gotcha. you. You spin with both hands, I got So there will be a give we'll back. Out, work it, baby, work on it. On that next week's show, it's going to be a blast. All it's right, going to be a really good, good one. Sneak a little more, a little more. It's going to be hardcore. So you want to join us for that. Did you guys and, put in the chat? How many people do you that? All right, let's get this guy cooking. A day suicide. Can you put a yes or a no in the chat? What That's is that question? Lot. I did not know. Did uh, you know the 22 people a day committed suicide? No, I didn't know that. Heavy duty. Yeah, it's hardcore. 22 veterans. Right. Best pointed that out. Yep. Yeah, that's serious. <laughs> All right, so Oliver pulled the pipe off, guys, because it was screaming hot. The tank's low. We had a big production day today, and the tank was down towards the bottom. So Oliver's gathering out of a deep tank, and uh, I don't know. I think that should be a name of one of the drinks at the bar, like. The Deep Tank Nine. Whoa. Yeah. That'd be cool. Oliver, you're getting a lot of love in the chat. A lot of people a lot. giving you some good luck. He's still got his first gather here. <laughs> and now he's getting some brown on there. Get some mushroom earth on there. Mushroom earth. Gotta have some mushroom earth on there. We're Thinking about a little bit of OT today, folks. Mark it down. We still got mushrooms on the table. We still have some. You got multiples to choose from. Take a look at the website, folks. Oh, is the only combo set left number five? Oh, no, you got number ten, too. Oh, and eight. You guys, the combos? Come on. Who's not got, gotten a combo? Number ten, the yellow one with a slug. I number will say eight with the snail. Number eight here with the snail is Weatherby. Weatherby the snail is one of the only snails that we've experimented with giving him a little bit of a slime trail. So this guy is slimy. You don't want to let him be on your hand too much, but this pink, he's got a really nice gullet up front, really nice cheek down here, and some beautiful flowing, marbling uh, snail flesh color. That's number eight, folks. And you said there's a little bit of a discount for the combo special, isn't there? Discounted glass. What's the name of that, like, folklore monster sap sucker? Do you remember? The something Yours? Something? Yeah. Yeah, the block bucket sap sucker. Yeah. Right? The block bucket sap sucker. How guys. many of you guys remember What'd you our just monster call me? show? <laughs> That's what it was like. They used to hang out by the glass boat studios down on the wharf. We all designed, oh, I designed a cullet monster. Michelle designed some sort of uh, curly hair. Yeah, I think she had a chance to post it on the app. What's that, what's that uh, name she of that one? It's stick on the bottom, hang it down a little bit. Oh, the block fucking sap sucker. It's story, I remember, and maybe Oliver will have a little experience tonight, you never know, but it hides behind the block bucket <laughs> when the glass blower's blowing and when the salty sweat runs down the back of its calf, it would dart out from behind the block <laughs> bucket and lap up the glass blower's sweat off the back of its leg. I... That is the block bucket. I don't know if I like the single word that came out of your mouth just Watch now. your ankles, <laughs> Oliver, to stay focused on the mushroom now. Don't worry if you feel something <laughs> licking your calf. <laughs> oh, Shot yeah. class. You got it. So who's doing the duck and the I'll get the tweezers with them. Just remember you want to get in there deep. Yeah. You're not pulling out anything too precarious. Do I need a? Do I want to give this a marber beforehand, or? Yeah, just let it dangle a little bit. Not if you want it to be organic. Yep, let it dangle, and then pop a squat with it. And you want to let it fall, and you want to pull it back up, and I'll pull the opposite way. Yep. Yank it. Yank it like a champ. Nice. Turn a little bit. Yep. 
Then you grab the same one or grab one, yeah, whatever you want. That's good. Looks nice. Oh, Woo! yeah. Really nice. I'd probably give that a heat, swing the whole thing, and then get your neckline in there. Do not, you guys know what will happen if he doesn't put a neck in there, don't you? Explode oh, like I don't think Frodo. anybody knows that. You won. Yeah. Does anybody out there know what would happen if Oliver you, forgot to put the neck inside his mushroom? You're, you're saying swing this. Put it in the feed. Yeah. Give it a swingulation. Not too crazy now. Just a little bangle itch. Watch out, everyone. Watch out. <laughs> we know what happened last time. Yeah. So give it a little heat, get a neckline in it. I'll bring over your Maurice. They were calculated. I re I did the math on it. I was crunching those numbers. And make sure you grab the paddle. Maybe Dad hand him the paddle so he can flatten the bottom up real nice. He's working on the neck right now. I'm oh. getting the paddle after his next flash. He's not ready for that bit yet, though. That looks good. Don't be taking it down too far. Now you're letting the neck get cold and you're just eating the bottom, right, Oliver? Yes, sir. I knew that's what you were doing. Final call for Mother's Day. We are sold out on the weekend, but if anyone wants to bring their mom and make a heart, we do have some openings on Friday. Indent that bottom a little with the back of the jacks. There you go. Nice. All right. You might be ready. I'm ready for you, Jake. Probably the ideal shot to drink out of this would be kava. Jam it in there good. Yep. Real good. Get it in there. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know. I don't see the, uh, the thing, but I'll tell you what. A bunch of thumbs up would be perfect right now. I, I wonder know. if during our show, if we had those indicators up, which we will, if there were somewhere in views that people saw. I mean, do people watch us on Instagram? No. So a thumbs up on Instagram wouldn't work. For the high quality. Ready for me? I'm ready for you. Let's do this. Kind of a hard thing to center because it's so off center. Purposefully. Purposefully? Yeah. You're just centering it with the pipe. Yeah, I wouldn't even. That's good though. Yeah. A little aqua. A little aqua? So often, okay. more than you normally would. If you're a regular watcher and you saw my last giveaway piece, you know, let's get a word of encouragement or thumbs up or something. Yeah. You did that one really fast. That last one? I did make the last one really fast. <laughs> yes, he did. And if you guys weren't here for that show, you're going to need a little more heat on it. If you guys weren't here for that show, that is when Oliver took one gather, puffed the bubble in it, gave it one swing, and it was That was the end of the show. It's a good time. We had fun. Well, you know, we spent about five minutes putting that glass in the essence of mushroom. It's true. It's true. Which is probably the best sound clip we've gotten. This is true. <laughs> Yeah, we were giving it the essence of mushroom. And you guys, that was probably three or four or five shows ago, maybe. We opened up a can of canned mushrooms 
and rolled both 2,000 degree glass in the canned mushrooms, and they literally screamed to us. They were like, ee! It was ridiculous. Yeah. Line and you just have to get it back up no matter what. And that's almost there, honestly. We're doing a shot glass, so it's not like it needs to be much wider. No, it doesn't. You just need to open up that lip and. About that. Honestly, I was kind of debating on maybe doing a little pluck and trim, but I'm not so sure. I need to see what the thickness looks like. I think it's looking pretty good. I also put a little bit of blue on there. And um, I don't want to lose that. Blue and amber, and this might be the first piece, I was going to say the first piece that we sold of yours. This would be. But it's not going to be sold. Well, it's going to be given away. You know, sometimes nice. you need that in life. It's the truth. Look at how smooth. He's learning how to turn the pipe really well with his left hand, folks. It's huge. Can I get a stamper on this guy? Let's get a stamper on it. And take a quick another heat. It's facing the right way. <laughs> He's jacked up, folks. Woo! We gotta get it off the pipe. So uh, don't you say it. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a love boy. It's a way answers in. Have you ever foraged for mushrooms? You on right side or left side, you right think? Right side. Thank you, sir. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> there we go! Some lucky soul's gonna win that beautiful low boy mushroom mm -hmm. shot glass made by the world's most famous apprentice. Yes, the world's most famous! <laughs> That was fun though, that was good. Yeah, that's the that first shot glass I made. It was really nice. So that's a little bit of OT for you guys uh, right there.